Okay, welcome back. Now, <clears throat> in the previous video, we found that the Windows Pixie environment, even the recovery version, didn't have all the network drivers. But why is this important? Well, connecting to the network, make sure that you're using the latest master golden image that was captured on the server. See the earlier videos about that. Um, and uh, booting from the network and then connecting back to the server to do the install, everything's fine. Boot from a USB, which may be necessary for some systems that don't have a network interface. Still need to call home and check the USB has got the latest image, because it only takes one cumulative update to um, slow the imaging to a crawl. Um, in this part, we're going to collect the drivers, then make them available in Windows Pixie by using DISM to load them, to add them. And uh, we'll check that they load properly. I'm going to um, start the get drivers script. Um, it's a bit anticlimactic. There it goes. As it goes through all the drivers, we'll just pause the video here. Okay, so that's it finished. Um, <clears throat> so now we can have a look and see what it's actually uh, created in drivers. Yeah. And it's a whole load of um, cat files, imp files the actual drivers <clears throat> and a few extraneous ones there okay so now we're going to add these drivers into the um, image um, using DISM again so DISM So the image is still temp. Uh, I'm going to add drivers. Which is singular. From drivers. And we're going to recurse. Now there is the option force unsigned here. Which, which would be great if it worked, but um, frankly it doesn't. Um, and say so the other drivers have to be signed. If anybody can find out how to get Windows PE working with unsigned drivers, um, I'd be really interested, and please put it in the comments below the video. Anyway, we'll just uh, load, the, load the drivers. It's actually loading five of them. Yeah, so there was a lot more than five. Um, as it, I don't know if you can remember, it's about 51. <coughs> but um, it couldn't use a lot of them, 46 of them. Okay. So, just seeing as it's only five isn't going to take too long. Okay, we'll come back to that. So, um, looking at uh, what actually happened here, a lot of them were skipped. Now, the first one, oh, sorry about that. skipped um, not this one because it didn't have a, a certificate now we um, could just have a look at that oh, well now to tell you what <clears throat> The Windows System 32. Where is it? And it's nothing on. Okay, so it doesn't have a cat file. It's not signed. 
we have a look at the uh, the imp file. You can see um, it's used in an awful lot of places. So what we're going to have to do is actually whoa, <laughs> Panasonic, you name it. So what we're going to have to do is um, uh, actually get the driver from uh, from the network and install that one. <clears throat> As I say, if anybody can figure out how to get unsigned drivers loaded, that would be great. You wouldn't have to. Um, what I've had to do is go and uh, collect drivers like this from the network and add them using DISM. The final thing to do is when you've loaded all the drivers is to um, recreate the boot file and you do that again with DISM and I'm uh, going to unmount the image. The mount deer Oops. Temp. It remembers the fact that it's boot file, and we have to commit to actually do it. And then it just writes the it just writes the boot file. Again, I'll stop the video here. Um, although it is going pretty quickly, um, I'll stop it here. There we are. So it's now finished. Um, and it's unmounted the image. So we now have a boot file there and it's grown it's grown quite a bit. Um, what we can do is copy that to um, the install media and reboot the system and just double check that the driver starts. Okay. So I copied the boot um, dot .wim file to this install media there it is, that's a new one, and um, we'll let the thing boot, start the pre-execution environment and have a look at the drivers. Right, so now you can see there's another one. Interestingly, it's come out of oem2.inf. <clears throat> well, that's the way that DISM actually adds the driver instead of putting in. If you look at the one above, <coughs> kdnic.inf, um, it uh, creates a unique inf file, uh, so there's no clashes. And it starts at 1, and so we'll have OEM12345. OEM so that's the boot.wim file updated. Right, so next time we'll use this boot.wim to create a USB bootable thumb drive. See you next time. Bye.